Welcome back, another episode. In the first scene of The Cleaning Lady Season 3 Episode 1, Thony encountered obstacle after obstacle while attempting to get Fiona home, leaving her in a precarious situation alone. Despite the fact that Thony has frequently found herself in risky situations, some of which were accidental, others of her own doing, she has always had support. Thony rarely had someone by her side, be it Armin or Garrett. However, that is not the reality Thony is currently facing, since Garrett has vanished and Armin is missing following an unplanned shootout that left him exposed. This season has started off on a depressing note, and it's quite upsetting to realize that the cleaning lady has moved on from Armin Morales on Dan Canto, and into a new chapter. Not too much has changed since the Cleaning Lady Season 2 Episode 12, when Thony and Armin were collaborating to get Fiona back home. That was still the original idea. However, things quickly became worse when it appeared that Armin and Thony were set up, their drugs were taken, and the police showed up at the hangar. Seeing the entire scene unfold was a touch weird. And at that precise moment, you kind of felt like Thony and Nadia, seeing the action from the sidelines and speculating about Armin's future. Thony and Nadia were unable to protect themselves from the barrage of gunfire, so their only chance of survival was to flee. Nevertheless, both ladies struggled with their choice in the wake, realizing that they had effectively parted ways with him, as if he would never truly leave them. Nadia's resentment of Thony has been building for a long time. Not to go too dramatic, but when Armin met Thony, her life took a different turn. Is she really blaming Thony for everything? No, but is she right to believe that Thony has, in a number of ways, both directly and indirectly, taken a sledgehammer to her life? Indeed, even though we regrettably won't be seeing Armin on screen going forward, his apparent escape from the hangar and the lack of any concrete evidence of his whereabouts set up a major mystery to start the season and allow for more development of the Armin character. With Camder roaming throughout Sin City, there was little time for moonlight dances and vows of love for any of them. However, Nadia and Thony's intense affections for Armin are evident in the way they overcame their disagreements and sorrow to work together and find him. When it's convenient for her, Thony has frequently used Armin, showing little concern for his well-being or even his feelings. She would always sacrifice Armin for whatever she saw to be the greater good, even if it meant defending her family. I had no idea what to expect from Armin's parents, if only because of their completely different personalities and perspectives on their son's separation. Teresa was caring and worried, even if she still complied with her husband's orders for the most part, but Eduardo was cold and heartless even in the face of his son's absence. It's amazing that Teresa never disobeyed her husband to see how Armin was doing during the previous 23 years. Their separation was obviously causing her a great deal of anguish, so she seized the chance to assist him when it became available. Eduardo's resentment of Armin was counterbalanced by his family's association with smugglers. He would not have approved of Armin's decision to enter the criminal world if he had no desire to interact with that side of the family. Although Thony's visit with the Morales parents didn't seem to have much of an impact, Natalia's life was ultimately saved by the jewelry that Thony stole from her. After three seasons, Thony's defense that she is only the cleaning lady is no longer effective. She had a cartel necklace on and was standing outside a smuggler's location, and she fully expected everyone to think she had no idea what was going on around her. The biggest bomb of the hour came from Ramona and Jorge Sanchez, who identified themselves as Eduardo's siblings and Armin's aunt and uncle. This implies that Armin has been living his life without even realizing how influential his family was. Even though Jorge was the one shouting and shooting, Ramona was clearly in charge. Take Fiona's entire ordeal as an example. Fiona was not worthy of being deported. She is aware of it. Tony is aware of it. It's known to Chris, Jazz, and JD. When it comes to Luca, Thony loses all sense and many others have to suffer as a result. Fiona gives Thony a lot of freedom, possibly too much grace, which makes her a far better person than most of us. Although Fiona is an adult who made a decision, Thony also placed her in such a trying circumstance. Additionally, she has been placing her in challenging circumstances for some time. To be honest, being threatened by Thony and having her home broken into was simply one more item to add to the list. For obvious reasons, she wished to leave the Philippines, but at least she seemed safe there, at least until Thony's transgressions again caught up with her. Since Fiona is one of my favorite characters on the show, learning more about her background and seeing more of her during this hour were pleasant surprises, as well as getting to know Paolo. Though a touch unbelievable, Chris's journey to the Philippines made perfect sense given his trajectory. Chris was angry that he was stuck somewhere where he couldn't defend their mother, as both Jazz and Chris are extremely devoted to her. He fled in the dark, having grown tired of Thony too. If he was with Fiona, at least they could work out what to do next together. I worry about how they'll both return now, and to be honest, if they spend time with Paolo, which you know is coming, who's to say they won't want to? For more, subscribe.